welcome to another episode of Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler. I have two wonderful people sitting next to me. Los Gatos residents, you may even know them yourselves, Scott and Camille Athern. And thank you. How long have you lived in Los Gatos? Oh, geez. Um, we've been in our home uh, for 21 years, and before that... I was born well, were you? In Los Gatos Community. There yeah. you go. So Which is now our, El Camino. Yeah. Yes. Our whole life. I okay. mean, I was born at O'Connor Hospital in San Jose. Close enough. So, <laughs> you know, Close enough. 53 years, wow. almost 54 now. How about that? And you have three daughters. Yep. Yes. And their names are? Bronte, Isabel, and Abby. I love Bronte. What oh, a great thank name. You. Isabel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and Abby. Yeah. Who, what are their ages? Uh, Bronte's going to be 22 in April. Oh, all grown up. All grown up. And then Isabel just turned 19, and Abby's 11. Okay. Yeah. So you won't be empty nesters yet. No. Yes. no. So I don't want. Yeah. And you have a pig. we got to mention the pig. Finnegan. Yeah. Now, is it a pot belly pig? No, it's a micro mini. Is it micro mini, <laughs> and his birthday is in March, and he'll be two. But also, he's a baby. Yeah, well, he's, he's 50 pounds. He's so 50 he is the pounds. smallest you can get. Oh my yeah. God, why would you, how did that happen? <laughs> well, for Isabel. She wanted daughter, a pig? Isabel, yeah. Okay. So through all of our turmoil with Lyme disease that well, I'm we, sure we'll we're be get talking into, about, yes. um, she was deathly ill, as we'll get into, but uh, <laughs> the doctors uh, said, um, get Isabel. Something that Something she really wants. She wants. <laughs> And she wanted a micro mini pig. And the doctors thought she was going to say a car. <laughs> but she said a micro mini pig. And she researched and she found a breeder down in Los Angeles that actually provides pigs for movies and TV commercials and all that. And we ordered, um, <laughs> got a wait list, and she got to pick Finnegan. And, and Finnegan lives in your backyard or has his he, own room? In the or? house. In your house. <laughs> Thank God she didn't ask for a horse. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. She wanted a goat. She, she wanted, wanted a goat. goat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, they do something. They, they yeah. mow your lawn. Yeah. So. Yeah, and everything else. So, oh, my but. goodness. Okay. Well, well, we'll leave Finnegan alone for a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. you're here today, I will be honest with you. Uh, who the person who nominated you said, you know, you're a family with Lyme disease. And I have to be honest with you, I have never heard of a family with Lyme disease. Yeah. You know, you hear of one person has it. How, I mean, you have one daughter who does not have it. No, they, they no. Oh, have that no. Last yeah. Year. How does that happen? Because we'll start with Lyme disease is caused by a tick, right? Correct. So did you all get ticks? No. Um, Growing. It's so controversial, we have to say that. So things that we say, you know, because things aren't proven yet. We I mean, they're close to being proven, but it will get there. So I was, I was bit all the time growing up uh, by ticks, and I remember pulling them out and all that. So when I turned 40, I got deathly ill. I started falling. And I went through a year of trying to figure out what I had. They thought I had brain cancer, a tumor on my oh, wow. spine. And then we come to find out I was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh. And then it changed to PLS, which is the sister of Lou Gehrig's. And then our daughter, Isabel, got deathly ill. And we found out she had Lyme disease through a Lyme litter doctor. And then he said to me, what's going on with you? I told him the story. He goes, I don't think so. Long story short, found out I have Lyme disease. So it's not 100% fact proven yet, but we are one of the families, and there's several we've meet, met that everyone, every member in the family has Lyme. So our girls through conception. That's what I was thinking. Because our oldest, Bronte, was born <clears throat> sick. And then... And we never figured out why she was and sick. And what kind of symptoms did she, she have? She had anxiety, OCD. Stomach. Stomach issues. issues. And she, right away from oh, infancy. Her. Yes. I mean, they, they, and, and she was delivered. 
and she was screaming, and the nurses, the doctors couldn't figure out, did blood work. She had elevated white blood cell counts. I mean, she's hours old. And they, and they can't said she has an infection. We don't know what it is. And when you hear about Lyme, most people think back east. Lyme yes. In Connecticut. Yes. So we would never in a million years think that. And you had it too, though. Are you I have it. I, I, through the grace of God, honestly, I've been so fortunate. I, maybe because, I don't know. I just, I've had to take care of my family for so long. But I have symptoms, but I've been very fortunate. So you had, so Bronte had it, and then... But we well, found out Isabel had it first. Isabel had it first. Okay. So when she was in fifth grade, so in second grade, she got Epstein-Barr, oh. which is rare, they yes. said, right? And then in fifth grade, she got really ill, stomach illness. And we found out she had a rare parasite oh. from South America, but even though we've never left the country. So because that's a co-infection she had from Lyme. So we found out she had Lyme disease. Then I was diagnosed six months later and got on treatment. And then when Bronte here at the high school, in the polo, you know, play, she is a water polo, her legs went numb. And then we didn't know. And then we found out it was Lyme disease. And the reason she had learning disabilities and everything kind of clicked from birth the infection, now we can relate it, it's all related to Lyme disease. So, and then Abigail, our youngest, when you start to uh, mature in puberty, I'll embarrass her. Hi, Abby, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, she's been she, embarrassed before, it's she, okay. <laughs> she started showing signs of Lyme. We had her tested and there's this one test, which is a DNA test. They call it the needle in the haystack. One hers, million. Hers came back positive 100%. Uh -huh. And she, we know for a fact, she's never, ever been bitten by a tick. So it just goes that through conception. Yes. And then more than likely, I probably had Lyme my whole life from 9, 10. And I probably gave it to you, Camille, unfortunately. And, now, and there's no cure, right? No. Um, well, I well, wouldn't say that. There's so, there's so much money being poured into Lyme research now. Starting. Starting. And we've, been, um, we've done some things for the Barry Lyme Foundation. We were chosen as honorees. Everything's a blur kind of the last few years. Yes. But about four years ago. So we spoke at an event, and it raised... But Half a million dollars? No, a million? a million two or something like that for the Barry Alliance Foundation. And, and we were the honoree family. They wanted the whole family to kind of show what Lyme could do. Right. right. You know, I'm handicapped. I can't walk, really. I need AIDS. And that's from all the damage done because they thought I had ALS. So but had they Lyme. known it was Lyme disease, perhaps we wouldn't be here. Exactly. Yeah, talking about this because yeah. they could have exactly. maybe done something so I much I could sooner. have gone on treatment. I, 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 early detection, I imagine, exactly. is the key. Well, exactly. the key is if you know you've been bitten by a tick, you need to get on the antibiotic series immediately. I mean, not a one-week series, but three weeks. At least. At I mean, least. These new studies are showing they're, they're learning so much now about Lyme from the time we've been going through this. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much money and how much research is being done. And I, I mean, I'm hopeful for other people because, I mean, I just had a mom email me from the Bay Area that her whole family just got diagnosed. Unbelievable. And you have different choices <clears throat> now. Um, so I believe A different series of how to, how to treat it. Yeah. So now you're going to learn something about me. Because I'm going to ask you about Yolanda Foster. So now you, now you know, oh my God, that woman watches The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And you know, her Lyme disease was a story for two or three seasons. She's not on it anymore. Um, and I remember at a time, she said her kids had it too. Yeah. And everybody was poo-pooing that, saying, okay, your kids have it too. 
but obviously it happens and it might have been through conception as well. That yeah. I don't know. And I don't know either. But we were able to meet her at um, the Airline Fence. Yeah, she, is she nice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, she's nice. really nice. She's and beautiful, isn't she? Yeah. She is. And, and what's great is because more and more of the stars in the country that have Lyme disease are starting to be more vocal and making There's it more mainstream. Yeah. Because we know stars, we would never say their name, that we believe and we've heard they have Lyme, but they won't come out right. because is there, you know, a the, the, oh, there is. Gosh. I mean, when a, when we were first sick, our kids were sick and sick and sick. We didn't know Lyme at first. And people, we would hear through the grapevine, did the Athens wash their hands? Oh. Um, we would hear these things. You know, and, it affects you because you think? yeah but you know it's just people being naive and mm -hmm. at the time we didn't know but um we're very fortunate the where we yeah, are here. today no we are is a tick truly the starting point it has to start with a tick someplace um along the way. a deer tick sure Yes, uh, yes. There are different types of ticks? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot. Okay. And, and the one, the, the most dangerous and potent of the ticks is a nymph, or it's the size of a poppy seed. So I always wonder, and thank God I've never been bitten by a tick. That I, I mean, would you, I always wonder, do you know if you get bitten by one? No. No, you Lots just got to hope that don't. somebody sees it, right? Or Exactly. You know, like when your dog is well, out there. Well, the problem is the most serious ticks are the nymphs, right? The smallest ones. And they're the size of a poppy seed. And what if they bite you on your scalp? You may never right. know it. And it also depends on your immune system. Mm-hmm. One of my daughters always, you know, from the time we finally found a Lyme literate doctor, um, he said, I think she's going to, it seems like she's doing better on treatment because of her immune system. Unfortunately, our middle daughter suffered. I mean, we almost uh, lost her this summer. So, oh, yeah, she, but, so hers is she turned on in, the road to recovery? Yes. Oh, it's Thank a miracle. Goodness. She's yeah. having seizures. You deserve a miracle. <laughs> you deserve <Yeah>. a miracle. <laughs> Oh, yeah. my goodness. So, Is this your whole life? I mean, do you have days where you don't talk about it and you feel okay and you get to play with Finn and <laughs> things um, like that? Um, uh, do you go to work? Well, I'm, I'm, work I'm able day? to work, okay, yeah. Cool. Um, one, of the, one of the big negatives of Lyme in the community and in the, in the insurance companies they don't really recognize Lyme as a chronic disease. As a chronic disease. How can that be? Well, can you show them your notes? Exactly. Because they think there's such a stigma attached. So a lot of doctors believe that if you've been put on medication a certain amount of time and you're not better, then it's not Lyme. There's something else. And Lyme mimics. It's the great imitator mm -hmm. of Parkinson's, ALS, PLS. Chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. Well, bring up lupus. That's lupus. also another thing. It's Not like, that what is it? people don't have lupus or ALS, but a lot of people that have Lyme are misdiagnosed. Like yes. That. Like, that's, we've that's, met that's, several people. I, I know people that have Lyme that she had lupus, but it was Lyme. We had some of the, yeah, a young lady, she was 53, oh. and she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 53, yeah, losing, her, losing her mind, and she lived in Canada. She found our Lyme litter doctor in the Bay Area, came down here, got her on Lyme treatment. Within three months, she knew who she was again, and, just, and now she's gotten better. So the, the quick answer, can you cure Lyme? You can get it to a state where it's asymptomatic. You can, you'll never rid your body of Well, that's it. what we think. We don't know. That's what we think. Well, well you seem to know I, a lot. I think. You seem to know I a lot, so true. I think we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. Because you've had it, what, 18 years? Uh, at least. At least. Oh, at least. Oh, yeah. And if we would have gone down, and, and again, there are a lot of people that are diagnosed with ALS that have that, so I want to clarify yeah. that. But if we would have stuck and listened to that diagnosis, 
I wouldn't be here today. Well, you have to be your own advocate. Yes. Don't we all say that? We have fought too. Thank Nobody you can really fight for to. you yeah. like you can fight That's for you. Right. That's right. That's right. So if you know people are listening and they say, I, you know, I wonder, I just wonder, is there a network? How can they get in touch with either you or somebody? If there's, you probably don't want to give out your email, but if you well, want, we, I get uh, this is no Honestly. exaggeration for the since we found out we have Lyme and we have over been, the years we've been big advocates because. I don't want this to happen. I, I understand. Think. So, um, but I think, but you know what? You could change a life today. You could well, change a life today. So I get, I get an email or a text every week. Uh, from, from someone. People that say, we don't know what to do. It's, it could be a very lonely place. But great websites are the Barry Lyme Foundation. All right. Stand, stand for Lyme. Stand, and it's actually Stan Ford. And then the four. number four, <laughs> Lyme. Okay, and it's L-Y-M-E. It's not L-I-M-E. <laughs> no. We put Correct. those in drinks. And then L -Y -M -E. the, Lime, the Lime Light Foundation is amazing. They give grants to people that can they, pay for their treatment. So the Lime Light Foundation is an, a great resource. Bay Area Lime Foundation is a great resource. And San, stand for Lyme. And you go, go to their websites and they'll describe Everything, Everything you need to know. Call. Okay. Okay. But we do constantly. I constantly. I get phone calls. I get these random. You just talked to a man from Hawaii that. From uh, Hawaii. That was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And he got my name. Well, I so. wish you the best. I thank, thank you so you. much for sharing your story and what a story it is. And I wish the best for your three daughters. Thank you. And so much. I hope you know someday you're walking them down the aisle. Yeah. And yeah. With, I'll with, cry. Finn, with Finn <laughs> holding the flowers or something. Yeah. And that you just get to enjoy everything. Thank You're wonderful you. Thank people. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh boy! So there you go. Community storytelling at its finest. Tough to hear sometimes. I'll admit that. Uh, thank you for being with us. If you have somebody you want to nominate, please, please do that at kcat.org. And Camille and Scott, thank you so much for being with us today. Anytime. You're welcome. Thank, and thank you. you for being with us at Community Storytelling, KCAT TV 15.